We appreciate you, Holy Spirit. We appreciate you, Holy Spirit. We appreciate you, the anointing. We appreciate you. I say you are you are worthy holy ghost you are worthy holy ghost my help help i help us you are worthy holy ghost you are worthy holy ghost you are worthy holy spirit we stand that you begin to move in a new way in our midst this morning. As I speak, don't let me be the one. Speak through me. I surrender my mind, my spirit, my soul, my body. Every part of my being is surrendered to you. Holy Spirit, this morning be free to teach, be free to rebuild, be free to encourage, be free to work miracles. Satan will rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You will not divide attention, you will not divide the minds. You will not disturb this process this morning. Lord, I receive the wisdom of God. I receive the mind of God. By the time we leave here, let there be hope, let there be life, let there be strength. And let Jesus be glorified. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. Because we've prayed by faith in Jesus' name. You may be seated.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got a word from the Lord for us this morning. And I just want you to follow me. God said I should give you a promise. Maybe you're in church today, you're sick in your body. Oh, yes, or something is happening to your body. And you don't know. I'll have a word. Jeremiah 30, 17. Jeremiah 30, 17. I want you to believe that word. God said, I should give you that promise. What does he say? Look up and see. For I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. Because they call you an outcast saying, this is Zion. No one seeks her. Hallelujah. How many of us this morning believe this is the word of, that God does not lie? God does not lie. Is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It says, I will what? I will restore health to you. I've come to announce to you, God will restore health to you. Maybe you are watching from home, you are sick. I've come to announce to you this morning, God will restore health to you. It says, I will heal you of your wounds. So if you have wounds, maybe physical wounds, it may be spiritual wounds, it may be emotional wounds. God says, I will heal you of your wounds. Hallelujah. God will heal you of your wounds. God will heal you of your wounds. God will heal you of your wounds. Says the Lord. It means, I mean, God said it. The Bible says God is not a man that should lie. And that is he a man that should change his ways. No, he says, I will restore health to you. Hallelujah. I will restore health to you. How many of us are, are ready for restoration of health? Sound health. Total health. That's God's promise. He says, I will restore health to you. Amen. That's the word of the Lord to you this morning. No matter what it is, God says, I will restore health to you. And I will heal you. Amen. Amen. So I want that somebody. That means that before this service is over, somebody is getting healed. Before this service is over, somebody will be totally healed. In verse 12, it says, your affliction is incurable. Your wound is severe. That's what they said. They said, your affliction is incurable. Your wound is severe. It's a strong one. It says, there's no one to plead your case. That you may be bound up. You have no healing medicine. You have no healing medicine. You know, this looks as a very, very serious situation. But God says, I will restore health to you. And I will heal your wounds. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One of the benefits of God is that God says he's going to return health to us. And I'm so grateful that God will. Hallelujah. Okay, this morning, my, the title of my message is How to be God's Most Treasured Possession. How to be God's most treasured possession. You know, how do we become God's most treasured possession? Hallelujah. How do we become God's most treasured possession? In fact, I would have said, how to outlive the pandemic... <laughs> And prosper in the pandemic. How to outlive the pandemic and prosper in the pandemic. Now it says, how to become God's most treasured possession. Let's go to the book of um, Exodus chapter 19. Verse 4 and 5. Four, five, and six says, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. I have bore you on eagles' wings and brought you out to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Hallelujah says, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me. A special treasure. Can you put it in the New International Version? 
You shall be to me a special treasure, an ivy. He says, look at it. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of the nations of the earth, you'll be my treasured possession. Hallelujah. He says, you'll become my what? Treasured possession. He says, the whole earth is mine. Yeah, I own the whole earth. But out of everything, you become treasured possession. You become a kingdom of priests and holy nation. Now, let's talk about what's a treasured possession. Go back, to the, go back to that slide of that title. You'll be my treasured possession. You see, when you treasure something, how do you do it? What do you do with it? You keep them very well. Abby, you make sure nothing touches it. Touch not. Most of us are treasured possession. Maybe it's our, some of us, our most treasured possession is our certificate. That's when we leave school. Even if you have a house, you see that the most treasured possession, you take the seal of O and keep it. In those days, you put your certificate under the mattress, under the bed, because you don't have something to do. You put it. When something is very treasured, you keep them. How many of us, you get to your house, and your shares, or your certificates, or your bank thing, they see it on the table in the, in the, in the center of the visitor seat, in the, or you display them in the... No, you don't. Where do you put them? In the room. In the inner, inner room. My mother used to have a box. In the inner, inner room. This old, you know, Portmoto, you know the called Portmoto, old school, you know that. They, they, you have the box, the lock, trunk box, you lock it, you know. So that's where you keep your treasures possession. You make sure that nothing touches them. You make sure that it is hidden, you know. A friend of mine was saying that in case this house want to burn, in case this house catch fire, our house will not catch fire in Jesus' name. He said, but I've told my wife and everybody that this box, this thing, help me take it out. This is the most important thing in this house. Just take them out. Because it's what? Treasured what? Possession. When you are a treasured possession, you can't touch. You know. So when you become God's treasured possession, God says, the whole earth is mine, but this one becomes my own. I take special watch. I take special care of it. I, 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 would, I would take care of it by myself. I'll make sure that no, nothing touches it. When you are God's treasured possession, you become can't touch. Nothing touches you. No evil comes near you. You know, says, although you, 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 the whole earth, the whole nation is mine, but you can become my treasured possession. Hallelujah. So how do we become? That word treasured possession was used, that same word was used in the book of Malachi chapter 3. Let's take a look at it. Malachi chapter 3. You know. Verse 17 and 18. It says, They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. When I, they will be my treasured possession. Look at that. On that day when I ask, says the Lord Almighty, they will be my treasured possession. I will spare them. Just as a father has compassion and spare his son who serves him. Verse 18. And you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not serve him. Hallelujah. So that same word was used. It says, God says, they shall be mine. They will be my treasured possession. And I will spare them just as a father has compassion and spare his son who what? serves him. So what qualifies you to become God's treasured possession is serving the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, it says as a father, a father will have compassion on a child that serves him. I pray that God will give us compassionate children in Jesus' name. Because if you have children that are not compassionate, then there's a problem. But it says, you will again see the decision between the righteous and the wicked. Between those who serve God and those who do not serve him. So we become God's treasured possession by serving him. By serving him, by service. So he says, once more you will see the difference between what it makes between being a person who does right and between a person that serves him and those who do not serve. Look at that. He says, they, they, are all, they are mine, all mine, but they will get special treatment. When I get into action, that's message translation. 
I treat them with same, as a, same consideration and kindness that parents give to a child who honors him. So when a child serves you and he serves you well, you want to show that child the honor. You give that child a treasure. I mean, yet that child becomes your treasured possession. So one way by which we become God's treasured possession is when we what? When we serve him. When we serve him. Ladies and gentlemen, when you serve God, you become God's treasured what? Possession. You become God's treasured possession. In the book of Job, chapter 36, verse 11, what does it say? Job 36, 11. It says, if they will obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If they will obey and what? And serve him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I am God's special treasured possession. It says, it says, if they will obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in what? In pleasure. Let me say this. When you are saved, he's told the children, he says, look, the whole earth is mine, but I'm going to make you my special treasured possession. That's what he said. And if you know when, when he redeemed them, the reason why you are saved, let's go to Exodus chapter 4. When he redeemed the children of Israel, what did he tell them? In verse 22 to 23, 24. It says, Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn son. So I said to you, let my, son, let, my, let my son go, that he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed I will kill your son, your firstborn. Look at that. He says to, he went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let my son go. If you don't, Israel is my first son. is my treasured possession. Why should he go? So that he may what? He may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, I what? I will kill your son, your firstborn. All those that refuse to let you go, God will deal with them. Anyone that says you will not go, you will not go, you will not move forward, God will deal with them. He said, Israel is my first son. He said, Israel is my first son. If you would not let me, let them go, I will deal with them. The reason why God saved you is so that you can serve him. The reason why God redeemed Israel said, let my people go so that they can what? They can serve me. And then you, can, you will see it in all the scriptures here. Let's go to the um, Chapter 7, Exodus chapter 7, verse 16. Exodus chapter 8, verse 1. Let's read verse 16. And he said to them, the Lord said to Hebrews, send, well, I sent, he said, the Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me to you, saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. But indeed, you have not heard. Look at that. In chapter 8, verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Go to Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all your territory with frogs. So the reason why God says he wants you to, to, to for you to, the reason he redeemed you is that so that you can what? You can serve him. Look at chapter 8 verse 20. And then it says, the Lord said to arise up on the alley. Then said to Pharaoh, said to him, let my people go that they may serve me. Let my people go, that they may serve me. Let my, so, you see, you are saved. God saved you so that you can what? You can serve him. Now, the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, so that the blessing, Galatians 3, 13, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. Hallelujah. So, the, so when you are redeemed, when you are saved, you are qualified that, that 14, as even from the course of the law, so that the blessing of that the blessing of God might come upon us Gentiles in Christ, that we might receive the promise through faith. Hallelujah. So when you are saved, you are 
qualify for the blessing. Are you following me? But what keeps you to be continuously blessed is service. Is service. When you serve God, then you are in continuous blessing. So it says, let my people go that they may serve me. If you don't let them go, I will what? I will kill your firstborn. Exodus 9, verse 1. It says, let my people go that they may serve me. I mean, powerful stuff. He says, let my people go that they may serve me. The Bible says, or else, if you will not let my people go, I will send flies. And uh, let me say this. It says in verse, in Exodus 8, verse 20, 22, and in that day I will set apart the land of Goshen in which my people dwell. God says he's going to set your house apart when you will serve him. In order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. And verse 23 says, I will make a difference between my people and your people. Hallelujah. God says, I will make a difference between you and the other people. But what makes you qualify is what? Service. Let my people go that they may serve me. I mean, you will see there in chapter 9, if you see in chapter 10, verse 3. Let me do one more because of time. It says, Israel said to them, let my people go, verse 3, that the, how long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may what? Serve me. But if you see that, if you see that scripture, Pharaoh was negotiating. He said, don't, the first time he said, don't go too far. The devil will tell you, don't serve God too far. Don't be an extremist. All this thing, all this coming to church, serving them, going to out to preach, it's too far. Don't go too far. That's the first one. Later on, he said, you can go, but don't go with your children. So, Satan will negotiate and say, you can't serve God with your family. Don't let your uh, children are supposed to serve God. He says, leave your children behind, and you are serving. Ladies and gentlemen, you are supposed to serve God, your whole household, with you and what? And your children. And then he said, Leave your property behind. Don't serve God with your means. Don't serve God with your money. Don't serve God with your blessings. Just you leave your property. So Pharaoh was negotiating. Satan will negotiate your service with God. But this money he has filled in Jesus' name. He says, I mean, he says, but as for me and my house, we shall what? We shall serve the Lord. Let my people go that they may serve me. Ladies and gentlemen, we become. You know, the, the word dwell means, in the Hebrew word is segula, which, which, is, which is treasured possession. Everyone will make a decision between those that serve him and those that does not serve him. It says, it says you become my dwell. It says, in that day, I will distinguish between them that serve me and them that what? That does not serve me. Ladies and gentlemen, those who serve God will be served by men. Hallelujah. When you serve God, men will serve you. Hallelujah. He says, I will make a distinction between them that serve me and them that what? That serve me not. Now, let's take a look at these scriptures. Let's go back to Romans 36, verse 11. Romans 36, verse 11, where we started from. It says, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their years in prosperity. And in what? And in pleasure. He says, if they obey and they serve him. So, what is he saying? If they obey, if they obey obedience, I mean, if they obey to, you just go, serving God, you don't need letter of appointment. Hallelujah. It's a choice. Hallelujah. I mean, it's not, you don't need letter of appointment to be a soul winner. You don't need uh, no requirement, no age limit, no maximum, you know, no pass by. Oh, he says, if you would obey and what? And serve him. If you obey and serve him, you know, you don't need all those things to be a soul winner. All you need is to be obey. If you obey, you know, he says, if you obey, God says, if you obey and serve him, he says, you, 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 you he says, I will do this for you. Let me tell you. When you, for you to serve God, you don't need any, you don't need any qualification. You leave qualification is the heart of obedience and begin to serve him. They don't check your CV. You know, they say you don't have any experience. There's, you don't need any experience. What you need is 
a heart to serve him, obedient, and begin to serve. Hallelujah. Now, there's a difference between many people are coming to church between worshiping God and serving God. Hallelujah. There's a difference between what? Worship and what? And service. Amen. There's a difference. Matthew 4.10. Let me show us something there. Matthew 4.10. You know, it's not... It says... Well, he said, does... Thus says the Lord, Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and in him only you shall serve. Hallelujah. So you start with worship, and then you go into what? Into service. What we are doing now, what are we doing? Worship. You start with worship, and then you go into what? Into service. So, I mean, Jesus said it, you shall worship the Lord and serve. So, coming to church is not really service. It is what? Worship. So, service means you are doing something. Hallelujah. You are doing something. You are doing something that is advancing the kingdom of God. You are doing something that is advancing the kingdom of God. That's what service is. You know, service means being involved in evangelism, in soul winning. You know, I mean, doing something that. That is advancing the kingdom. You're doing something. Yeah, we also serve in church. That's why if you are coming to church and you are sitting down, you're only a worshiper, you're not serving. You must do something. That's why we, in this church we are encouraging you. Can't come, you must serve somewhere. Serve somewhere. There's inward service and there's outward service. Although one pays more than the other one, but at least in every labor there's what? There's profit. What you do in church, you get profit for it. But if you just come, you are a Sabbath, Sabbath Christian. You just come, you just, you just come, worship and go away. You are not in service, ladies and gentlemen. There's service in sport, there's outside, I mean, outward. There's inward service, people that are doing choir, doing this and that. Thank God for those ones. It has, it pays. But that is not the ultimate. You know, the Bible says, listen to me carefully. The Bible says that when they sow a seed, say some gave tenfold, some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, some, and some what? A hundredfold. There is one that gives you tenfold, but you still got something. There's one that gives you thirtyfold, you still got something. But there's one that can give you sixtyfold, that can give you a hundredfold. And that's the one you do outside, what you do to build the kingdom of God. Every service you do, God appreciates it. We must serve God inside the church and then serve God outside. Hallelujah. Let me share, let me share a story with you. The Bible talks about, in the book of James, because of time now, in the book of Acts, sorry, quickly, in Acts, you know, the disciples in Jerusalem, God told them, says, go out and preach, and this and that. The Bible says, one day, Herod picked out James. He picked out James. But they didn't go. Later on, we learned that because they, were, they, were, they didn't go, they just stayed there. So, sometimes, Herod now took James. And what did he do with James? Before he knew it, what did he do? Killed him. So, James died. And then, not long after, he took out Peter. When he took Peter, he put Peter in a prison. Also want to kill him like James. But the Bible says the church prayed continually. That's fine. But God sent an angel to deliver. Did you think the church didn't pray when they called James? The church prayed. But the difference was that James was standing in Jerusalem. If you study before that time, Peter was already in active service. He was going from place to place. They were going from place to place. It was witnessing. It was saving soul. So the Bible says the harvest is plenty, but the workers are what? A few. The harvest is what? Plenty. The workers are what? A few. So praise the Lord of the harvest to send laborers. So he didn't say supervise us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord of the harvest that will send what? Laborers. So uh, many of us want to be supervisors, but he says laborers. Peter, James was a supervisor. He sat in, in, uh, in Jerusalem. So Heaven, he was a worshiper. God loves worship. But Peter was into active service. He was going from place to place, spreading the gospel. So immediately Peter was taken. Heaven could not afford to lose Peter. An angel was sent. God will send an angel of rescue to you in Jesus' name. Because when you are in service, you become God's treasured what? Possession. You become, I mean, you become God's treasured possession. Ladies and gentlemen, God says, I mean, you become his treasured possession. 
So he cannot afford to lose Peter. So God sent an angel, I mean, to save the life of Peter because Peter is in active service. The Bible says the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. So wisdom is come and become a worker. And you see what is going to happen. John 436, put John 436 there. John 436. You see, it says, let's go from verse 35, 30, 34, 35. Jesus said to them, My food my, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. He just said, my food, my work, is to do the will of him that sent me and finish his work. Then he said, do not say there are still four months to harvest. Then comes harvest. Behold, I see us, you lift up your eyes, look at the field, for they are already white for harvest. He who reaps, receives what? Wages. And gather fruit unto eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. Hallelujah. He who reaps, receives what? Wages. And gather fruit unto what? Unto eternal life. Ladies and gentlemen, when God called me to ministry, this is what I saw. He said, he who, he who reaps, receives what? Wages. So I realized that. I mean, how did I get encounter? Listen, there is nobody in the church who ever say, I don't have a job. Because you all have a job. Hallelujah. When I came, when I was, I used to work in the north. When I came to Lagos for, when I came for weeks, for almost one year, I didn't have any job. I didn't have a job. Everywhere I applied, they didn't take me. I was trying to, so... One day I started reading. I read the scripture. Say, wait a minute. I had no money, nothing. Then he said, he who reaps, receives wages. So I said, ah, okay, if they don't give me a job, let me go and do the work that God has given me. So every day I go out to go and witness. Every day I go out to go and witness. I say, I must save soul. And I started little by little. And suddenly, I began to receive wages. You listen to me. I didn't have anything, but I began... To, no job, no house, nothing. But when I began to go, I said, I won't stay. I said, Lord, he who reaps, receives what? Wages and gather fruit for eternal life. So I go out every day. I started what they call lunch hour fellowship in VI. And I began to. I remember one day I said, God, I said, God, you know, I've started lunch hour fellowship. I don't have clothes. I don't have what to wear. I need to look good. You know, I'm representing you. I'm going out every day. God said, okay. I said, what do you need? I said, I need a shirt. One day, somebody brought in 13 brand new shirts and gave it to me. Later, I said, oh, this thing works. I said, Lord, you know, everybody in VI, nobody should be sleeping if you are sleeping, wake them up. I said, everybody in VI, we are suits. God, I need suits. Somebody came and gave me another, is it four or five brand new suits? And then I said, oh, this thing is working. Lord, this thing, you know the way I go. Lord, I need a car. And later on, somebody gave me a car. So I'm telling you, this thing works. He says, he who, re, he who works, receive what? This is wages. Hallelujah. 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 You see, you, you, you don't know, no, you know requirements, no age limit. I mean, I mean you, can, you, can, you cannot be jobless when you are in Christ. Hallelujah. And let me say something here. Jesus said, when you work for him, you are in Luke 2, 49. And then, in verse 30, okay, Luke 2, 49. You know, you can't be working for God. God says a worker is worthy of his wage. Look at what he says. He said to them, why did you seek me? Did you know that I must go about my father's business? What did Jesus call what he's doing? He called it what? Business. Everybody say business. Say business. When you work for a business, don't you make profit? So when you are working for the kingdom of God, manifesting the heaven's kingdom, when you are working, God will pay. Hallelujah. God will pay. Hallelujah. It says, it brings business. I mean, you see, it's a key to free you from every challenge. Let me go faster now. I mean, he told them, in, in, let's, let's go back to the Old Testament. So, in, in, it says, let my people go so that they can what? They can serve me. So, when you are, your, your redemption qualifies you for the blessing. But for you to keep on to be continually blessed, you must what? You must have him. And then he gave, he gave a condition in my Exodus 23. What did he tell them? Verse 25. What are the conditions for service? Exodus 23, verse 25. I want you to follow that. 
What does he say? Now, you shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and water. I will take sicknesses away from the midst of you. None of you will suffer miscarriage or be barren your life. I will fulfill the numbers of your days. Let me say this. I mean, there is no business. Are you following me? There is no business that gives you that kind of offer on earth. There is no government that gives you that kind of what? Offer on earth. Serving God pays unmatchably. I mean, there is no offer. You know, when you see, they, they, give you, they give you what? They give you an offer letter when you go to work in the place, right? And they put the conditions. There, there is no government, no company that will give you this. If you serve me, if you work in my company, I will bless your bread and water. That's the only one they give you. They bless your bread and what? And water. The next one, I will take sickness away from the midst. No one can say that. They will only say, if you are sick, we will treat you. But this one says, I what? I will take sickness away from the midst. He says, no one will be barren. That means you cannot be barren. You will be fruitful. Your business will be fruitful. Your family will be fruitful. Your household will be fruitful. The things you are doing shall be fruitful. He says, you, 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 I mean, you, there is no match for what God has given us. You will not suffer miscarriage. I mean, which company can offer that? And then he says, look, with long life, you will fulfill the what? The numbers of your days. Supernatural fruitfulness. It will terminate barrenness. It will terminate everything that hell is bringing. You know. No government says long life will give you. No government on earth can what? Can match that. Look at that. It says, I will do this. I mean, which, who can give you that? I will take sickness away from your midst. No one will suffer miscarriage. No one will be barren in your land. And I will give you long life. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you that serving God pays. Amen. Serving God's what? It pays. I mean, it's, 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 when you serve God, you begin to manifest the kingdom. You know. Uh, let me say this. Let's go to Jesus Christ came and offered the same thing. Let's, let's take a, look, a few look. In the book of Job, chapter 1. Even Satan knows that serving God, verse 8 to 10, he says, he knows that serving God pays. Job chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. You know, the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? That means he's serving me. There is none like him on earth. Blameless, upright, one who fears God and shall evil. Satan says, does he fear you for nothing? Is he serving you for nothing? Satan knows that when you serve God, there is what? There is payment. Hallelujah. Look at that. He says, does he fear you for nothing? Verse 10. Say, have you not, what did, because Job serves him. He says, what did he say? Have you not put a hedge round about him? I can't touch him. You have blessed the works of his hand. And his possession have increased in the land. That is what serving God brings to you. Hallelujah. When you serve God, genuinely, God put a hedge round about you. He says, have you put a hedge round about around his household? around all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hand and his possession have increased. Your possession will increase. Hallelujah. There is nothing that matches like serving God. Not just serving, but continuous service. Hallelujah. Let, let, me, let me go. Let's, I mean, he says, God says, blessing of service, security, prosperity, health, fruitfulness, and long life. All these are available. Let's look at Daniel 6, 16. The story of Daniel. You know, powerful story. You know, maybe we should start from Daniel chapter 3. You know, those, you see, those Hebrew boys. Those Hebrew boys. If, if, you, if you look at verse, in verse 17, verse 17, they were going to throw them into fire. He says, 16 and 17, sorry. 16 and 17. We are going to throw them into fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king and said, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you on this matter. If that be the case, our God whom we serve, our God who what? We serve. Is able to deliver us from what? 
burning fiery furnace. And he will what? Deliver us. When you serve God, God will deliver you. If God can deliver from burning furnace, he can deliver from coronavirus. Hallelujah. He can deliver from anything. Our God who we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. He can deliver you from death. You see, serving God can deliver people in the days of death. I've seen people that are in the airplane. The airplane crashes and they are not die because they serve God. You see, no juju, no science can save you when you are up there, but God can serve in God. Says our God, we are able to serve. They threw them into fire, but they didn't burn. Hallelujah. Some of us, maybe you've had some experience in the last few days. I mean, maybe because this thing started, you've gone through some experience. You, you're in the funny, you you've gone to funny furnace, but you did not burn. You will not die. Hallelujah. You are coming out, God is delivering you in Jesus' name. Even if you are afflicted, you are going to come out delivered in Jesus' name. It says, yeah, our God that we serve is able to deliver. We serve. They are God whom we serve. Can you say that? Let's go to Daniel 6.16. Quickly, Daniel 6.16. The God whom we serve is able to deliver us and he will deliver us. Oh, yes. And look at the story of Daniel. Daniel was thrown in the, because he was serving God continually. He was serving God and they threw him into the lion den. So the king gave the command and they brought Daniel and cast him into the dens of lion. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, say, your God whom you serve, what? Everybody look up and look at what it says. Your God whom you serve, what? Continue. Everybody say continually. Say serve continually. So you don't serve this year and next year you won't serve again. Somebody said they didn't appoint me in church to serve. That is not it. You are not everybody you can serve anytime. Nobody can stop you from witnessing. Hallelujah. In fact, what pays more, I told you the one that brings you hundred for return is what? Is going out to witness. Hallelujah. Going out, doing, praying about the kingdom. Praying for the kingdom. And then saving souls. Kingdom advancement prayer. That's what uh, someone called the bishop. So you are praying for thy kingdom come. You are spending time to pray for the advancement of the kingdom. You are doing something. And then you are going out physically to bring souls to the kingdom. He says, he says the, God, I mean, the God who you serve continually will deliver you. And did this God deliver him continually? Did that God deliver him continually? Ah. The king prophesied. He says, Daniel, look. The God that you serve. Did he deliver you? Look at verse. Let's go to verse, verse 19 and 20 and 21. Hallelujah. Then the king arose. The king couldn't sleep. They threw him in the lion's den. Hallelujah. The king could not sleep. And he went to the east of the lion's den. Now verse 7. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a voice. Daniel. Then he spoke. Saying, Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God. Can they call you servant of the living God? Say, servant of the living God. Oh, as your God, as your God, whom you serve continually. Look, that's an heathen king. Say you serve your God continually, being able to deliver you from the lions. And what was the answer? He says, he says, then they, Daniel said, Oh king, what do you say? Live for what? Forever. He says, My God has shot the mouth of the lion, and they have not hurt. You will not be hurt in Jesus' name. No matter how much the lion of this earth is strong, it will not hurt you in Jesus' name. He says, my God that I serve and shot the mouth of lion, they did not touch me. They couldn't hurt me because I was innocent. The God that you serve continually. Hallelujah. 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 Continue your service. Continue your service. Continue your service. Look at Acts 27, 25. Brings deliverance. God will fight for you. I mean, I mean, uh, there are so many stories. Isaiah 36 talk about, uh, about Ezekiah. I mean, God sent an angel. He's like, God, I serve you. You can't serve God and then you can mess up with you. No. Those who serve God continually are open for miracles. Hallelujah. Isaiah 20, uh, sorry, Acts 27, 25. Bible says, Paul was in the boat and the boat was going to collapse. Everything, they've given up hope and everything was gone. There was no hope for salvation. There was no hope for, for deliverance. But Paul said and came out and said, ladies and gentlemen, take heart. You men, for I believe God, I will be just as I was told. Let's, let's see, he says, and then what did he say? Go back, go back, go back to verse 23. You For they are stood by me this night. The angel of God to whom I belong and whom I what? I serve. It says the angel of the Lord to whom I belong, whom I what? Whom I serve. It says 
Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all and those who are with you. Because that man served God, everybody in his household, in the, in the plane with him, was saved. Hallelujah. Says the angel of God. Says the God who I belong, who I serve. Where do you belong? Are you in service? Says God. And God sent his angel. He says, look, everybody will be saved. And everybody was saved. Serving God brings deliverance. Brings deliverance. Let me say this. Serving God makes a star out of ordinary believers. When you serve God, you become a star. Serving God gives you an enviable life. Hallelujah. Your lives become enviable. Psalm 102 verse 12. Sorry, verse 13. Psalm 102. Your life becomes enviable. The, 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 the boat was on the ground, but nothing happens. When you serve God, it brings favor to your life. Psalm 102 verse 13. You know, I mean, it, it, it gives you, for you will arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her has come. Yes, the set time has come. Verse 14 and 15. Yes, for your servant take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust. Verse 15. And all the nations of the earth shall name the Lord out of the kings of the earth shall come to your glory. It says, it says, for a set time to favor God. I mean, you see, when you serve God, it brings you into a dimension of favor that nobody has. It says, for your set time for favor has come. Why? Because you show favor. You favor the things of God. You are in active service. Hallelujah. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. For your servant take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust. So, it's showing pleasure. Showing, serving God brings you into the dimension of favor. Dimension of favor. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm saying process. I mean, favor. You have great favor with both God and what? A man. Verse 15. So, nations shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth, your glory. The, I mean, it will bring you a fearful dimension of favor with both God and man. People will see it when you serve God. You can't serve. Every servant of God is a high flyer. Hallelujah. Let me start closing now. You see, there's a place for sowing in church. Hallelujah. I mean, when we, you serve God with your substance, all right? You give. But you see, he, 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 that's why we get blessed. When you serve God with your substance, you give. But that does not bring the unread. I mean, that does not bring the best out. Ladies and gentlemen, you, 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 that does not bring the best. You need to. The best comes when we are involved mostly. You see, when you serve God with your household, you worship God, you serve God with your property, and then you also include saving souls, going after the lost, witnessing. You know, that's what brings Kingdom service is what brings the best for you. Hallelujah. Let me read a few things. Jesus Christ, Christ said, he closed the ultimate and says, seek first the kingdom of God and what? And his righteousness. And what? Every other thing shall what? Shall be added to you. What does he say? He says, if you seek first my kingdom, I will add every other thing. A pressure-free life. Hallelujah. You are not pressured. You are a, a needless fear of life. You don't have a need. Every need, before the need arises, the answer is waiting. So every other thing you need, Shall what? Shall be added unto you when you serve God. When you do something for the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, when you serve God, you will outlive coronavirus. Amen. When you serve God, you what? You will outlive coronavirus. Even in a time of pandemic, you will prosper. When people serve God, nothing can stop them. Says God's provision will come to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read John 15, verse 2 and then verse 16. Let's read John 15, verse 2 and verse 16. Let me say this. Jesus said we must, be, we must produce fruit. You know, people, some, this is the command, uh, 2, verse 2, verse 2, verse 2. You know, Jesus said we must produce fruit. Uh, what does he say? Everybody look up. I want you to look at this very carefully. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, what does he do? He takes it away. Every brand that bears fruit, it prunes and makes it more bear fruit. But change it to another translation. Let me see another translation. Every, look at NIV. Every branch that does not bear fruit. What does he do? He, let's everybody read up. He cuts off every what? Every branch in me that does not what? Bear fruit. 
So if you are a child of God and you are not into soul winning, you are not branching, we are not branching, you are not, you are not bearing any fruit. What does he do? Cuts away. You are not, you are not connected to soul. Look at verse, go to verse 16. Verse 16. You did not choose me, but I what? I chose you. And I've appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. That will last. So that whatever you ask in my name, I what? I will give it to you. Hallelujah. 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 You see, when you serve in church, you get some blessing. When you serve God with your property, you get some blessing. But the ultimate is when you go out and push the kingdom of God and you win souls for Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, says, you did not choose me. I chose you. I put you to go and when you bear fruit, the fruit that will last so that what. Ever. It's the same thing as John. He says, whatever you ask in my what? In my name. I what? I will do it. Powerful stuff. Change it to uh, that, says, you know, but I chose you. So that my go and be a fruit that will last. Change it to King James uh, NKJV. You didn't choose, remember? You put my word. Uh, yeah. You did not choose, but I chose you and pointed you to go and be a fruit. So your letter of appointment is what? What? Go and what? Be a fruit. Your letter for men to kingdom is after you have been saved. What do you do? Go and what? Bear fruit. And that your fruit should what? Should remain. So you don't only bear fruit, you make sure that that fruit remains. So you pray that God will establish them. You, as you pray, God will establish them. You encourage them. You bring them to church. You bring them to, do, to be established, to stay in the kingdom. You are doing something to establish them that your fruit will remain. So it's not only be a fruit. After you have saved them, bring them to church. Let them know God. Let them get discipled. Let them know Jesus. Help them. Encourage them. And then, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Who has ever offered that? The best is to bear fruit, ladies and gentlemen. I wish I had time more. I'm telling you. Thank God for stewardship. Thank God for serving God in church. But there's nothing that pays as when you bear fruit. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to close this morning by letting you know that serving God will bring favor to your life. Amen. Serving God will bring deliverance to your life. Serving God will bring longevity to your life. Serving God will bring breakthrough to your life. Serving God will bring unspeakable joy to your life. I mean, when, you, when, you, when you win a soul, also there's what? Joy. Where? In heaven. There's joy in heaven. That's unspeakable what? Unspeakable joy. Serving joy, God, will bring sound health. Sound health. He says, I will take sickness away. He will make sure you are strong because not too many people are serving. Many people are just worshipping. They just come and worship us. So if, but if you are in service, he will do, some, do something to bring souls to God. You can share a tract. You can go out to witness. You can give a book. Oh, yes. Oh, serving God will bring protection. It will bring what? Protection. God will protect you. It will give, make your life a life of wonder. People begin to say, hey, look at what God is doing for this man. It brings prosperity. It brings pleasure. What say? Eh, if I can't go, I'm, I'm afraid not. Look, when they went out, in Luke chapter 10, it says when they went out, verse 19, nothing happened to them. He, I mean, it says, Luke 10, 19. He told them, he said, I've given you power to tread over what? Upon serpents, upon scorpions, over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means what? Out to you. He says, we went out. If you look at verse 16, before that time, it says, even, say, even them, them ones who are subject, you he hears me, he hears you, he hears you, go to verse 17. Go to verse 17. The 17 return with joy, says the Lord. Even the demons are subject, they return with what? Joy, joy. Unspeakable joy. Even Lord, demons are subject to us in your name. Then verse 18. Ah. Then he says to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Satan has fallen. Hallelujah. He says, when they went, then verse 19, go back to 19 now. Hey, hey, behold, I've given you authority to trample upon serpents, scorpions, all parts of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing, including coronavirus. Nothing, including death. Nothing will hurt you when you're in active service for God. Let's rise up on our feet. My time is up. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I can give you testimonies, testimonies upon testimonies of service. You know, you know, they told us, ladies and gentlemen, they said, every three minutes, a soul is going to hell. What will you do? Many of you have been giving, but you have not been experiencing the best that you could. It is service mixed with giving that gives the best, that guarantees greatest return. When you take care of God's business, God will take care of your business. And what's his business? Saving souls, going out to win souls. Somebody said, hey, but I can't do that. You can, you, what are you doing with your Facebook? What are you doing with your, with your phone? You're on social media every day. You can share the love of Jesus. Share your testimony. Witness to somebody. Even if you don't, if you don't, you can win a soul. Last week, a lady called me. I said, really? Early in the morning, I saw, I saw, I saw something. He said, I want to kill myself. He said, something is telling me to just kill myself, kill myself. I asked, I said, we are, I mean, he says, he says, I don't know. The thing is putting pressure on me. I'm tired of life. I'm tired of living this kind of life. I said, what do you want me to do? I said, I said, what do you say? Oh, you know, I met you when you go, when you go to witness at the marketplace. You gave me your number. That's where I met you. I didn't see her, but I led her to Christ. Hallelujah. Right on the phone. I led her to what? Christ. So you can use your phone. You can use, you can use your Facebook. Use anything. Everything you must have. You must what? You must have God. God is calling us. Ask the voice of Jesus calling. Who will go and walk today? Why did leaders please come out? Fields are wide. The harvest waiting. Who will bear the sheaves away loud and loud the master calleth rich rewards he offers free who will answer gladly say yeah I While the souls of men are dying And the master calls for you Let not hear you lightly say There is no service is, this is inward, and then all of us must also be involved in what? Outward service. That's the one that pays the highest dividend. So, being inward is not enough. I know you are a giver, but giving is not enough. Giving mixed with service. Serving God with your means is giving, right? So, you've been sowing seed, now you are getting harvest. Then know if you are doing the real one, you will see what is going to happen. It says, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do for you. If you bear fruit, and your fruit abide. Church, let's just stretch forth our hands towards them. Just let's stretch forth our hands towards them and pray that this year they will do, they will, God will perfect all that concerns them. They will not miss the mark. Anybody at home that is watching, Lord, who is part of this team, Lord, we ask that your hand of mercy will be upon them. Father, we thank you. Let's just pray for them that they will fulfill their purpose, they will fulfill their assignment the mighty name of Jesus 
that will not be a castaway. Let fresh oil come upon them to serve God in a new dimension. Thank you, Father. Lord, grace to serve. Receive now in the name of Jesus. Grace to serve acceptably. Receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing matches like serving God. There's no government, no company that pays as you pay, Lord. Give us grace to serve you in Jesus' name. Father, today we dedicate this once to you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And we declare, Lord, that they will serve you in truth and in spirit. They will be our fruit and their fruit shall abide. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Elevate them from that level. To a level, not just worshippers, but to another level. Those who serve you in truth and spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Those of you that are in the congregation, just raise up your two hands and say, Lord, I receive grace to serve you. I receive grace to serve you. I receive grace to serve you as never before. I receive grace to serve you as never before. Lord, the power to serve you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Say, Lord, I just don't want to be a worshiper. I want to serve. I want to serve. I want to serve you. With all my means, with all my strength, with my time. I must create time to do something daily, weekly, for the furtherance of the gospel. For the furtherance of the gospel. We get somebody. I must invite somebody to church. Invite your unbeliever to church as part of serving God. Don't come in alone. Invite your unbeliever and say, Lord, I must do something. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You may go back to your seat. While we are standing, I just want to make if you are here this morning and you want to give your life to Jesus, you are here or you want to rededicate your life quickly, raise up your hand. Let me pray with you. God just told me that there's somebody here. You've not given your life to Jesus, but you want to give your life to Jesus. All head bows, all eyes closed. Is there somebody like that here? You want to give your life to Jesus? Don't be ashamed. Just raise up your hand quickly and then we'll finish the service. Is there somebody like that? This is your, you want to give your life to Jesus? Anyone like that? Raise up your hand quickly. Thank you. Okay. Anybody watching that wants to say, is there anyone like that? I can't see anyone that wants to say, okay, I want to give my life to Jesus. Okay, let's bow our heads as we pray. If you are giving your life to Jesus, if you are watching from home, say, Heavenly Father, today I surrender my life to you. Give me a new heart and a new spirit. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me all my sins. Come and live within me. Today, I take Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You will not come near me. I surrender my life to you. Take it, Jesus. Because I've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.